Boom. Okay, guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to talk about how to start your journey as a barber. Um, we have with us Mr. Eddie. He um, founded the YouTube Barber Academy and currently owns a shop in Naples. He's been doing this for about 18 years now. He's going to share his journey with us. Mr. Eddie, welcome to the show. Thank you, man. Appreciate you having me. Um, thank you for coming on. So 18 years as a barber. So tell us how that's been, like, especially during this pandemic. Well, actually, I haven't updated that in a couple of years. It's, I'm, I'm actually coming up on 20 years now. Wow. Uh, but it's it's actually been a great journey, man, from from start to finish. And, you know, it's one of those things I'm really passionate about. And part of that is the reason why I started the YouTube Barber Academy, because I wanted to kind of help educate people like how to get started and that you can do it, because I, I think a lot of people don't even really see this as an option. You know, a lot of people are going to go to college. They're going to go you know, get their degree, they're going to do a lot of stuff. But, you know, and realistically, you can you can make a nice living this way. And you can have a good life. And, and it's a lot of fun to be in a shop, you know. So, so true. yeah, in the in the pandemic, um, I know it's a fact that a lot of other states worse, worse than Florida. Uh, but we we really didn't have to close very long in Florida. And we were pretty much operational. I, I think we closed for about two weeks. And it really has been uh, business as usual right after if not we, we may have even gotten busier because people started moving here so it's right. it's been a really nice thing to be here and thank god in, in florida where you know it wasn't as bad but yeah i know a lot of places got you know hardships and got shut down and uh you know it's, it's terrible what happens you know yeah so true so do you think that it is uh do you think people should go to barber school oh yeah absolutely i mean you have to go to barber school in the United States. Now in the UK, it's a little bit different, but in the United States, in every state, you have to go to barber school to get your license so that you can practice. And if you don't, you're able to uh, probably get by on the side. There's plenty of people who do this at home kind of under the table. But if you want to take this to a level where maybe you could have your own shop someday, maybe you could have people working for you. Maybe you could actually kind of rise above just being, you know, a, a one chair person to, you know, having a couple of chairs contributing to your, your income. Uh, it just wouldn't be possible to do that without a actual license, you know, to, to do go. So true. So do, what do all successful barbers have in common? Well, that's a, that's a good question, man. I think some of the stuff that, you know, I noticed that a lot of people are, are, are going to say that or are going to be, a lot of people start out by cutting their own hair, cutting some of their friends' hair. You know, a lot of people sort of admire some of the style that they see in the world. And they're like, man, you know, I want to, I want to be a part of that. I think I can maybe try to execute that. I want to learn how to do that type of thing. Uh, but I think the successful barbers are going to have an unwavering belief in themselves because, you know, when you start out, you're not nice. You're not, you're not doing great work and you can get discouraged right away when you go to a shop and you, you're working alongside of people who got years on you and, you know, you, you, you're measuring yourself against them. And, you know, you have to have that dogged belief in yourself that I'm going to figure this out no matter what it takes, no matter how many extra hours I got to put in. And I'm going to be successful, too, because even when you get out of school, you know, that's only half the battle because now you need to find clients that are going to trust you. And doing that, that that can easily take you down some dark places because you can start feeling like, man, I'm not good enough, man. Why am I not busy? What about this? What about that? So having that belief in yourself the whole way through is like, this is going to happen. Even if I'm in this shop and no one comes in, I'm going to stay here because someone might come in and that might become a customer of mine for life. So just leaving early or doing these type of things can be really detrimental to what you're doing. And you just got to believe it's going to happen and it will happen if you're doing all the right things. That's really true because my brother is a barber and when he started out, I was one of the, the lucky ones to be a patient. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he's been a barber probably, oh my God, um, at least 20 years now uh, as a barber and um, he, done, he does very well. Like you said, it takes a long time to build a clientele. And I remember these was back in the old mm -hmm. days, 20 years ago, where you can just have to just literally just start with your friends and your family. Right. And, once you get better and better um, with that handcraftsmanship, then people just start knocking down your door, making appointments, et cetera. So he definitely had to get out there and grind. And 
and he make his name for himself for people who just literally just literally now he just make appointments yeah you have to make an appointment <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing too that i want to stress is like anybody can learn this like there's been so many people who have came to my school or came to my channel and were like man i'd like to do this but i don't know how like as if we were born just came out knowing how to cut like as if i just had this god-given ability like i had to learn it too and i've taught you know through through the youtube i've taught a lot of people but i used to work at a barber school for 10 years also so i had that experience of watching people come in knowing absolutely nothing and leave pretty damn good you know so, so anybody can learn it so what are the best tools for beginners the best tips for beginners yeah best tools that they can they can utilize for beginners all oh, the best tools themselves you're saying you know that that's a uh that's a that's a topic in of itself i mean it's sort of like saying what's the best car or what's the best you know airplane or what's the you know everybody's gonna have their opinions and um i'm a big fan of you know some companies and and other companies you know i i, I could do without but for the most part as long as you're getting a, a top tier tool um, you know, I like Gamma a lot. They're my favorite company. They sponsor me. So, you know, they take care of me and they are, they are making new innovative products all the time that are putting a lot of pressures on the bigger companies. But for the most part, as long as you're working with something in the realm of that top tier, you're going to be fine. You know, if you got wall, if you got Andis, if you got, um, you know, even Babyliss, if you got Gamma, that, that type of stuff, they're, they all make great products and it's, it's not the Indian, you know, it's, it's not the arrow, it's the Indian, you know what I mean? It's, it's the barber that makes that tool great. It's not so much the other way around in my belief. So how did you get interested in doing YouTube? So you've been a barber, you own a barber school, you work at a barber school. So what interests you in starting the YouTube channel? Well, I don't, I don't own an actual barber school. I just, I just began. So the reason why I started this was because every three months or so we would get a new group of students would come in. And then, you know, those, those students that came in several months, they'd start to, you know, go off. And I was repeating myself over and over again uh, with the groups. And I was experimenting with different styles of teaching and different type, you know, different things that worked and stuff that didn't work. And well, to make a long story short, you know, students will miss some people have to take breaks. there will be like leave of absences and then they'd come back and they'd be like way far behind. So I used to go out of my way and try to catch that person up and it just got to be too much. So I thought to myself, you know, I need to make some videos to get these people up to speed if they can't come to school or something happens. So originally I never really intended for these videos to go online. I, I intended them to be used internally at the school. And then, uh, you know, YouTube was starting to become a thing. This was about 10 years ago. And, you know, I started noticing that YouTube was a thing and I was like, you know, if I post them there, they could watch them from home. So I decided to post a few and they did really well. And then it kind of, you know, kind of real, I kind of realized like, wow, you know, maybe, maybe this is something I should pursue. And, and little by little, it actually caused me to become like addicted to cameras, editing. Uh, I went down the rabbit hole of just wanting my product to be better and better and better. And it actually spawned a whole separate business. Like I actually have a company, I make commercials for people, I edit for people and I do that type of thing. But it was just that that obsessive nature that I have. I just wanted to do better work than what other people were doing. And I just wanted to keep getting better and better um, at it. Whether I succeeded or not, it's another story, but I, I wanted to, to do better. So that was what started the, the academy. But then when all the responses started coming in, you know, you really helped me. I couldn't have passed my state board without you. I really appreciate this channel. I've referred back to it over and over again. You know, people started sending me all that love. And then that made me want to do it even more, you know regardless of the views, regardless of whatever else might come, it, it was enough to make me uh, want to continue doing it. Right, right. I like that's awesome. So, you know, what is you think is the effective way to um, grow a clientele? A very effective way to grow a, kind, a clientele is uh, a strategy. We, we call it first in, last out. So you want to be first in that shop. You want to be last out of that shop. Because at the end of the day, like if you tell people you're going to be there from nine to five, and you leave at four, you know, them clients that may have came in looking for you, let's say two or three clients came in looking for you. Those could be weekly or biweekly clients that are paying you $30 each time they come. You may have just increased your monthly income, you know, $180 and you just lost it. And, and that might've been times three or times four or coming in late. 
So the first thing is if you establish your hours, they, they need to be, you know, you need to stick to that because whatever you're doing on the internet to bring people in, whatever you're doing in other areas of your life to bring people in, it's not going to work if you're not there, you know? So that's, that's a big one for me, but posting regularly is, is also going to help you. I mean, Instagram has, has become the tool of choice, I think for most barbers, because, you know, it's, it's all pictures and it's a little less uh, words and stuff on Facebook. It's just a very great place to keep your portfolio. And, you know, there's, there's definitely stuff to be said about that as far as trying to keep it professional. Like you don't need to be posting all the stuff about your life on your business, Instagram, like that should be a place where you are just showing people you're showing the world that, Hey, I do this. I'm plugged into this and I post on it regularly, you know? Cool. So you're working on something right now. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, well, when I worked at the barber school, a lot of people were starting to, um, you know, a lot of people would start school, they'd have all this, you know, drive and stuff would start catching up with them, man, because these people are working like two jobs, trying to switch careers. And they take on school on top of that. And, you know, eventually, they'll just hit the wall, you know, where they just they're just doing too much. And they wind up taking a break from barber school. And I would say, in my experience, we lost like 30 to 50% out of almost every starting class, you know, as a result of financial hardships and stuff like that. Um, obviously there was more that than that, but a lot of it was financial in nature, you know? So I always wished that there was something I could do, but, you know, literally working at a barber school, I'm not making enough money to, to help, you know, that, that, to that extent, but we're about to hit a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. And I had been planning this for, for a long time, like how I would do this. And so what I did was I created this thing called the barber tuition initiative. And I'm just asking all my subscribers and anybody who wants to help, if they if they give the price of a haircut to the barber initi uh, initiative, what we're doing is we're actually going to go find those people in need, find those people that need some help, and we're actually going to um, surprise them. They're they're not going to have any idea until the day it happens, and uh, we're going to be able to sit down with that person who's struggling, and we're going to just tell them like, listen, man, your, your tuition is paid off in full. So all you really got to do is focus on, on finishing school and get through it. So maybe that's one less job that they got to take on. Maybe that's one less thing that they got to worry about. And uh, we're also going to try to bless the other students in the class with, with stuff from the sponsors as well. So they'll get clippers and trimmers. And we're, we're, trying to, um, we're trying to grow this into a big thing so that we can actually do this for a lot of people. That's really awesome. That's so awesome. I mean, drop the bomb on us. Let me know where we can locate you, how we can find you so we can learn so much more about you. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you guys over the, the fundraiser link and uh, we'll, we'll put the link down in the Dropbox below. And if you guys just click on it, we're just, like I said, we're just asking for the price of a haircut. And if we all work together, we call it Eddie's Army. Like people started calling it Eddie's Army and uh, uh, together, you know, we're strong and we could we can actually do stuff like this. And with the help of some of the sponsors, if anybody else is out there and maybe you own a company or maybe, you know, you're involved in some way. Um, it will be an advertising expense for you. So you can, you can write that off. And uh, there's another channel that you can use to, to contact me directly. Um, so I'll, I'll put that in the link as well. And if you want to contribute any type of products or anything like that, we're, we're willing to work with anybody who wants to um, further the cause. That's so awesome. Thank you, Eddie, for joining us. I appreciate it, my brother. Yeah, man. I appreciate that, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Yes. I'll be yes.